welcome back to my channel and today we are going to do a video that I'm really excited about. Today I'm going to teach you how to crochet Momo from Avatar The Last Airbender. So a few weeks ago I posted a video about how to crochet Appa and it has gotten so much amazing feedback. If you tried to make Appa, if you watched the video, if you left me a comment, it really was so sweet, just so exciting. So thank you so much. Today we're going to make a little friend for Appa, we're going to make Momo. So the supplies that we're going to need today are very simple. We're going to need four colors of yarn, white, light brown, dark brown, and green. We're going to need a G crochet hook and stuffing. You'll also need a darning needle to sew in the loose ends and attach all the pieces together. And we're also going to need plastic eyes. A lot of people asked me where I got my eyes. My mom bought me a huge bulk of these like years ago, but I used to be able to only find them in small craft stores. But I did a quick Amazon search for plastic and make a roomy eyes and a ton of them came up so if you just Amazon it you can find them really easily. I don't think I'm going to make him in proportion with Appa just because then he'd be really small. <laughs> so we're just going to kind of make him like just kind of the same size as Appa so they can just be pals. Not in proportion but it's fine. So if you're familiar with crocheting go ahead and skip ahead with this part because this is just for if you're not as comfortable with crocheting or you've never done it before. So the first step is create a slip knot. So how you do that is you wrap the yarn around two of your fingers and then push the tail up between the middle of the yarn and your two fingers. Then you let everything go but you grab the tail hold the loop and pull and it creates a slip knot. Then when you pull on the tail you can adjust the size and you're going to put your hook into the loop and that is how you start. I'm going to cut to a section of my oppa video where I explain how to hold the tension of your yarn correctly because that is super important and I think that will help you a lot. Put your hook in the loop and pull it so that it is snug but there's still room. So holding your crocheting yarn is pretty much the most important step because it determines the tension which determines how tight your stitches are and your string just doesn't go everywhere. So here's the way I do it. I hold the crochet hook with my pinky and my ring finger. My pinky is pinching the hook and guiding it. Then I take the yarn underneath of my middle finger, then I hold right on the knot with my thumb and my middle finger, and my pointer finger guides the hook. So that's my right hand. What my left hand is gonna do is, your pointer finger is gonna come under and you're going to hold the knot with your thumb and middle finger if you're not holding it with your right hand. And then the pinky is holding the yarn down here to keep it tight. So even if I pull on this, it's not going anywhere because the knot's being held here and the yarn's being held here. So now that we know how to make the slip knot and hold the tension of our yarn correctly, we're going to go ahead and start with the head. So all the stitches that you're going to need for this tutorial I will explain. So the first one is a chain. So it's called a yarn over when you take your hook and put the yarn over your hook. So I'm going to yarn over and then pull it through the current loop that was on my hook. And that is a chain. So we're going to do four of those. And then we're going to connect the chains with a slip knot to create our little bird's nest. Take your hook and you go underneath of this little loop here. A slip knot, you just pull it through and pull it through. And that is a slip knot. So now we have this little ring and we're going to do our stitches into the center of the ring. So row one is six single crochets into the ring. So here's how you do a single crochet. You put your hook through the center hole, you yarn over, pull it back through, yarn over again, and then pull through the two loops that are on your hook. And that is a single crochet. So we're gonna do six of those. So we're gonna take that original string at the back and just pull it tight to tighten up the middle. And now you have this. So for the next row, you're going to do two single crochets in each of the stitches that you just did. So how to see a stitch is if you look at your little bird's nest, you can see there's kind of like a braid going along the outside. So this is what one stitch looks like, kind of like one section of the braid. So we're going to do two single crochets into the same stitch and that is gonna increase the size of our little bird's nest to make our head. Do that all the way around so that you have 12 stitches. For row three, we're going to start a pattern where we increase to help grow this circle. So the pattern is gonna be one, two, one, two. So you're gonna do one stitch in the first stitch, two stitches in the second one, one stitch in the third one, two stitches in the fourth one, all the way around until you have 18 stitches. So something I like to do to help me keep track of what row I'm doing is I like to take 
the little tail that is in the back and I like to put it through the first stitch so that I know the beginning of the row. So I just put my hook through the first stitch and then pull the tail through and now you know where the beginning of all the rows are. So for row four, we're going to do another pattern, but this one's going to be one, one, two, one, one, two, and that will create 24 stitches all the way around. Your piece should be a little bit cone shaped like this. So now I'm going to move my marker and for rows five to eight, we are going to just stitch one stitch and all the way around to create the height. All right, we just finished row eight and now I'm going to move my marker and then we're going to start decreasing to form the bottom of Momo's head. For this next row, we're going to do a decrease stitch. So we're going to do one regular stitch, one regular stitch, but then for the next one, we're going to do a decrease stitch. And a single crochet, single crochet, and then how you do the decrease stitch is you go through and yarn over just like a regular single crochet, but then you do it again in the next stitch. So you're basically combining these two stitches into one. You yarn over and you pull through, and now they become one stitch instead of two. And you're gonna repeat that pattern all the way around until you only have 18 stitches around. Whenever I'm doing decrease stitches, I find it's really easy to start making my stitches really loose and sloppy. So you just wanna be really careful to make sure your stitches remain tight and neat. Like that, see, that's too big. So we wanna go back and tighten the original loop before we create the stitch. Now for the next row, we're going to do one single crochet, one decrease stitch, single crochet, decrease stitch, and repeat that pattern all the way around until we have 12 stitches around. Now it's time to stuff the head. For this next row, it's just going to be a complete row of decrease stitches. And we're going to end up with six stitches all the way around. So because it's stuffed, you're gonna have to be really careful that your stitches stay nice and tight. When you're done with that, it should look like this. We're gonna start these exactly how we started the head with four chains and a slip stitch to join those together. Then we're gonna pull the string really nice and tight at the end and we're going to stitch six double crochets into the middle hole. So a double crochet is just like a single crochet except that you add one more yarn over before you start. So you yarn over before you go through the center hole, yarn over again, then you should have three loops on your hook, yarn over again and pull through each one of those loops. And that's a double crochet. So we're gonna do six of those. So at the end of those six stitches, just pull on the tail and then we're going to slip stitch in the first stitch that we did. So you can count back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're just going to go through the stitch, yarn over, and then pull through to slip stitch. I'm gonna leave a nice long tail because we're gonna have to sew this on to Momo's face later. So for this one, we're going to begin by chaining three. Then we're going to turn and we're going to stitch into the second two chains from our hook, a single crochet in each one. Then pull on the tail to make it nice and snug, chain one, and then turn. Then we're going to do two single crochets in each one of those stitches. Chain one and turn. For row three, we're going to do one single crochet, two single crochets, chain one and turn. So this is what your piece should look like so far. So this is going to be at the bottom of Momo's chin, and this part is gonna go up over his eyes. So for this next row, we're just gonna stitch one in each stitch across. Chain one and turn. For the next row, we are going to do a double crochet into the first stitch, and then a second double crochet into that same stitch. For the next stitch, we're going to do two double crochets as well, and then we're going to slip stitch into the third stitch, and then do two more double crochets into the next two stitches. We're going to create a trim all the way around. Continue going from where you were, but instead of turning and stitching across the top, you're gonna turn to stitch across the side to create a border. So you're going to do single crochets across, and because there aren't actually holes for real stitches, you just kind of make your own stitches and just stitch all the way across and around to form a nice border. When you finish stitching the border across the bottom two sides and you get back to the top, now we're going to create those two humps for Momo's eyes. We're going to slip stitch in the first stitch and then in the second stitch, we are going to do a double crochet and another one and then slip stitch in the next stitch. Slip stitch again, then we're going to skip the next stitch and then double crochet twice in the next stitch. Then slip stitch, then slip stitch, and you're done. 
So we're kind of creating a rounded heart. And it's okay if it's messy, we just want it to fit on the face and then have enough room for the eyes so that they're still brown around the edges. I'm gonna take my yarn needle and I'm going to weave in the original tail from the face piece. I'm also gonna take the eye pieces and I'm gonna sew in this back string. I'm gonna weave it around and just cut it off so that there's fewer strings everywhere. You're gonna take your green circle and your plastic eye and you're just gonna push it right through the center. And then you're going to take your brown piece because I want the brown to be around the outside as well. Just placing it around here. And when you're done with that, we're going to go ahead and secure the eyes on the brown piece. So you're just gonna snap on the backs. And now those two pieces are secure. So I wasn't sure how to make Momo's body because different pictures kind of showed different parts where it looked like it was white with a brown stripe or brown with a white circle. I ultimately decided to make his body white since the majority of his back is white with just a brown stripe going down to his tail. So we're gonna make his body white and then add the brown pieces where we need. Well, you're gonna start off with your little slip knot and then we're gonna start off with four chains and connecting them with a slip stitch just like we did for the head. So for row one, we are going to do six single crochets into the center of our bird's nest. For row two, we are going to do two single crochets in each stitch around so that we get 12 stitches. Row three, in the same way as we made the head, we're going to do one single crochet, two single crochets, one single, two single, all the way around until we have 18 stitches. For rows four through 11, we're just gonna stitch one stitch in each stitch around to create the length of the body. After you finish row 11, we are going to move our marker. So we're going to begin our pattern for decreasing. So we're going to go one single crochet and then one decrease stitch. And we're going to repeat that until we have 12 stitches. I'm going to go ahead and stuff the body. For the next row, we're going to do six decrease stitches all the way around. Momo's arms, we're going to make them in the dark brown and then we're going to add the white stripes on the back afterwards. So we're going to start with the four chains and a slip stitch to create a ring. After this, we are going to do six single crochets in the ring. Instead of doing two stitches in each stitch around like we have been doing, we're going to stick to one stitch in each stitch around since his limbs are pretty thin. So it's going to start curving up like this and kind of look like a little cup shape. After you get to the 11th row, you're going to stuff it. And when you have a really skinny piece like this, it's easiest to use something like a pencil or scissors to push the stuffing down in. After you finish stuffing the arm, you're going to pinch the top and sew it straight across so that the top has a flat part to attach to the body. And you're going to make two of these for both of Momo's arms. For Momo's legs, we're going to make them exactly how we made his arms, except that instead of 11 rows, we are going to have 14 in total. Now we're going to make Momo's tail. So we're going to start it out exactly how we made the arms and legs. For the first row, you're going to stitch one stitch in each stitch around. Now we switch to the white yarn. Then you're gonna do two rows of white. Then switch back to your brown yarn, one row of brown. Switch back to white for the next two rows and then change to brown until you get 24 rows. So for the white outside part of Momo's ears, you're going to start with chaining six, then you're going to skip the first chain and then stitch one single crochet in each of the next five stitches. For row two through six, you're going to just stitch in each stitch across and then chain one in turn until you get to six rows. For row seven, you're going to do one decrease crochet stitch and then three regular single crochets. And we're going to continue with rows eight through 11 of just stitching three stitches across and then chain one and turn in between every row. For row 12, we're going to do another decrease row. So we're going to do one decrease stitch and then two single crochets. And then rows 13 through 14, we're going to do three single crochets across. For the top of the ear, we are going to go through all three stitches and yarn over, then yarn over one more time and turn them all into one stitch as the point. Then you're just gonna weave this thread back through and that's the finished white part of the ear and you're gonna make two of these. For the light brown inner part of the ear, we're going to follow a very similar pattern to the white outer part. So just go ahead and pause the video right now and follow the pattern to make these. It's very similar, just a stitch smaller. 
Now we have all the pieces except for the brown stripes that I want to put on Momo's body. But I want to put them together first so that we can see how everything looks. So on my Appa video, I didn't show how I sewed the pieces together. And a few people were wondering how I did it. So I'm going to show you guys how I sewed the pieces together to finish Momo. So the first thing I do when sewing the pieces together is usually sew the body and the head together. I look at the strings and see which one's longer, the body one is longer, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out to the edge here and just go like this because I don't want to start sewing from right in the middle. Then I'm going to take the head and I'm going to position it on top. Now I'm going to stitch into the head and then back into the body and you just keep going back and forth until they are secured together and then with this extra string from the head you can just tie that off you could do it before you start stitching the pieces together and that's how you sew the pieces together so usually when I tie off a string from tying the pieces together, they're already secure. Even if I cut this off right here, um, it wouldn't come apart. I don't really need to bother knotting it. But usually what I do is I go back down through the piece and I'll come up through the side in between the stitches. And then a trick to help hide the piece is you pull it a little bit harder than you normally would. And then you cut it and then it will spring back inside the body so that the piece is hidden inside. Next, I'm going to sew on Momo's face. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck both of these in and I'm just basically going to stitch back through so that they're hidden back here and then tie them off. I'm just positioning it where I think it looks the best. And we're going to have to sew this on really nice and tight. I don't want it to stick off too much. So I'm going to use a whip stitch to sew this on. Then I'm going to go down into the head and come back up through the brown piece. And then keep repeating that. Then go ahead and sew on Momo's four limbs with that same whip stitch style. All you have to do is make sure that the limbs are sewn on at the same height. The next step is to sew the brown inner ear pieces to the white outer ear pieces. So I just made sure that both of the wrong sides are facing each other so that the right side of the white ear is facing the back since that's the part you'll see the most and the right side of the brown inner ear is facing the front. If you're not sure what the front and back of crocheting looks like, the front just looks a little neater and honestly if you like one side more, just put that to the front because it's whatever you want, it's your Momo. Because I had to stitch these together and I didn't want any of the brown yarn showing through on the other side of the white ear, I made sure to only put my needle through the front part of all the stitches while stitching it. So I'm working on sewing on the ears and it's actually a lot harder than I thought it would be because I definitely want them to stand up straight because Momo doesn't really have droopy ears all the time, but I also I wanted them to be turned out a little bit because his ears aren't straight on either. So I ended up with this for the right ear. It looks good. I'm just worried I won't be able to repeat it with this one. <laughs> So basically what I did was just a bunch of tiny stitches at the base just over and over again to form a really stiff base so that it wouldn't flop over or anything. So just keep working at it and don't be afraid to rip it out and try it again if you don't like the positioning at first. So we have finished sewing all of the pieces onto Momo and he looks so cute. I'm really happy with how he turned out. But now we just need to add those little details to make him finished. The first thing I want to do is add a nose and a mouth. So a lot of the pictures of him have his mouth in like a little triangle going down but it kind of makes him look sad so I'm just gonna do the little smile going up and then for the nose you can either embroider a little nose on or I actually have some of the plastic noses just like the plastic eyes but it looks like a little animal nose so I'm gonna go ahead and use that now if I'd been thinking beforehand I would have attached it on with the plastic piece onto the brown piece before I'd sewed it on so if you're gonna do that remember to put that on before you sew the brown piece on but because I've already done it I'm just going to use a little drop of super glue So to make the little brown stripe that goes on Momo's chest, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to chain seven. Then you're going to skip the last chain that you did and then stitch in each stitch across so that you have six stitches overall. All right, then you're going to chain one and turn and then you're going to do a double crochet stitch into the first stitch. Then you're going to slip stitch the next four stitches. And in the last one, you're going to do one more double crochet. Now you have the nice curve that's gonna go towards the bottom and the flat part is gonna go towards Momo's head. 
For the brown stripe that goes down Momo's back, start with eight chains, skip the first one, and then stitch in the seven stitches across, tie it off, and then you're done. We're also going to make two brown stripes to go down each one of Momo's sides. So for those, we're going to begin with 16 chains, then skip the first one, and then stitch 15 stitches across. Just make two of them, and then you're done with those. Let's sew on these side pieces. I'm gonna do these ones first so that this top piece can go over top of them if, if there's any um, extra coming off. But we wanna make sure that the bottoms are at the same place on his legs. So I sewed the pieces on with a whip stitch, just making sure that they were very straight going down the sides. And next I sewed the brown stripe down his back, also using whip stitch, just making sure that it was straight and in line with his tail. The last pieces we're going to make are the white stripes on the back of Momo's arms. So pause the video here to read the pattern, but it's just two rows of 11 stitches, and then just sew it onto the back of his arms. much for watching. I had so much fun making a little friend for Appa. Momo is so cute even though I like Appa better. Don't tell Momo, but Momo is still great. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you get to try to make Momo and that you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next week for another video. Bye guys.